I cannot tell you how many messages and emails I've gotten that basically say somewhere along the lines, when's a guy gonna snip up a Ford truck? Well, that day has finally come. That's right, down this driveway sits a 1967 Ford F-250 that's been sitting on this farm for 24 years. In hell or high water, I'm getting her on and I'm, I'm gonna drive her out of here today. Bad news is, I know nothing about Fords. Good news is, I got a key. So, we're gonna dig in and get started. Let's go. You know, the best way to buy these old trucks is don't look at them first, just agree to buy them and then that way when a guy shows up, it's kind of more of a surprise. Just right up here. What brought Bradley with today? So he's gonna basically do all the work and I'll work on the cold snacks. Here it is. That looks pretty straight actually. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Well, that's all factory in there. I bet that's really rotted underneath all those needles. Shoot. Oh, grass is soaking wet. Well, there is a tailgate. This is down. Doesn't look so bad, Brett. Oh, this door has been. You know what this looks like? That looks like a cow rub. And they snipped the old mirror off, too. So I bet at one point there was cattle around here. Or she came out of the pasture. Look at all that moss. It's all over the windshield. Rough. There you go. 1995. What's hanging off the mirror? We got an air freshener. Thermometer. Ooh. We do got happy trees. Floor shift manual. Tank still in it. So far I'm pretty happy with this actually. It doesn't look that bad at all. Saw a couple pictures, but they were at night, so you can't really see much. Um, I'm gonna get some boards, and we're gonna crunch the grass down around the truck so we can see it a little better. And then we'll snip the hood open and see uh, how much is missing, not what. Well, the diagrammical engineering behind this is, these guys can make crop circles out of boards. I can kind of swath the pass with one, I think. Just kind of do that. Squish her down. Oh yeah. Straight. What are these things? Weird. It's kind of working, right? Yeah. There we go. There, now we can see a little bit better. So a little rust down there, not too bad. Of course, the corner of the doors. Look at that mosquito. That's a big one. Pretty solid down here. That's typical old trucks. Bumper corners are gone. This side. I think it's actually better as far as the box goes. Got some sort of expert factory repairs going on here. That's fine. Touch of weight reduction there. So that's not so bad overall. I think. No, I think that's flat. Not quite sure if these have air in them or not. No, that's flat. 
All right. Well, let's crack the hood open. Oh, she's in there. Hey, it's got parts. Oh boy. Let's turn it around to about 36% chance it's going to run and drive it out of here. Well, here's what I'm working with. Heavily weight reduced, no battery. Uh, digitals are still on it, that's good. Still pumps there. It's got to have a carb, that's hooked to something. Uh, oh. Turns over. That test is done, although that snapping noise doesn't sound very good. She's empty. Real clean. I mean, just ignore them. That's fine. I'm thinking that's a 240 or a 300, and they're pretty identical from the outside, so a guy can't really tell. 240s are a 4 inch bore, 3.18 stroke, and the 300s have a little bit longer stroke different chambers in the head. They produced about 170 horse. The 240s were about 150. Uh, they both had the Autolite or Carter one barrels on them. And these little gems would get about 20 miles to the gallon, which back in the day was really impressive. And they even put them little girls in dump trucks and stuff. So durable little guys. They were basically built to run three to 4,000 RPM all day. This one does look fairly complete, and I'm just realizing that I didn't bring an extra fuel pump or a lot of these parts, so this is going to get interesting. No gas in there, definitely no water, so that's good. Uh, let's see what we got for carb action. not fun when these are locked up. Yes. Uh, how do you even work this linkage? Oh, there we go. That's moving. Yeah, it's opening, but it's kind of sticking half throttle open, which is just fine. Hoses aren't too terribly rotted. Missing three hose clamps. Must have needed a mouse for on the farm. So, I think the very first thing we're going to do, since we know she already spins over, we'll hook a battery on her and see if we got any starter action. It is already getting hot. Great. This is a Super Start 4000. Why did I pick this one? Good question. She's got the go handle on her. It's probably going to fall right through. Good enough for testing. Whoa, maybe not. Okay. Feels neutral ish. Nothing. Do got a light up there. Zero crankage. Great. That's perfect. All right. Relay jumper 200. Nothing. Let's see. Got juice here. Yep. Got some juice down here. Yep. No juice there. Okay, Bradley, turn the key to start. Off. Start. Okay. Right out of the gate. Bad relay. Great. So those are, those are going to be really easy to find. So a guy's been checking the old grounds out using ohms or resistance and getting a little high on the body. And that could be another reason for that relay not to work. 
And the body ground over here is just hanging. And I might just run one from here directly to the mounting bracket. But this is all shocked on a guy. So I'm going to try to clean the grounds up first. Because it's going to take me hours to try to find a relay today. And I'd rather not do that. Get this out of there. And uh, gently just get in here and, you know, get some... If you want to get some fresh metal, use some precision, something like that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, that body ground is on. And I made a quick uh, ground cable over here that comes around right to the relay mount. Cleaned up the metal here, got some fresh metal showing. And of course this clamp went ahead and snapped off, so I threw a new one on there and cleaned that up. So before I did all of that, I was getting 0.3 resistance on the engine and basically nothing on the, on the body. So now if I do it, I'm at 0.02 there and 0 0.02 on my starter relay as well. So that's significantly improved. Then right off the alternator, I'm at 0 0.02 as well. So that kind of shows all that ground digital stuff works. Oh, fingers crossed. Bradley let her rip. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You got it, man. Good job. All right, so not a bad relay. It's just the ground digitals. We got that all squared away. Yes, that's good news. Well, I think before I get too carried away here, just dump some old fire maker down here and see what happens, I guess. That's way too much. Perfect. All right, Bradley. <laughs> Try her again. All right, stop. Uh-oh. Let's go a little more. Really make sure to flutter. All right, try her again. Okay, stop. Well, I guess we're on to testing the old sparkulators. These spark tester 200s are sure nice. Go ahead, Brad. Okay. So, no light bulb. That means no spark. Great. All right, well. Take the lightning whirler off here and see what we got going on. Cap looks pretty good. Rotor's been replaced before, but it's bad. And I'll show you here, if you get if you get the engine rolled over just right where it's about to open the points, you can turn your rotor and see your points opening and closing. And if your key's on, you should be able to see a tiny little spark in there, or at least hear it. And I've got absolutely nothing. I mean zilch. Great. They might just be dirty, so just hit her with a brake clean. Just a little bit. And this might uh, rejuvenate them. Just enough. Well, we were able to track down some points in a condenser here, so I'm going to snip these in real quick. A lot of the feedback I get, especially from the younger failures, they don't like these points, and a lot of it is the setting them up. And all I do, which my dad taught me, I just slide a matchbook in here and gets a guy close, and then you can dial her in from there. But I'm curious, if you're running points, how do you adjust yours? Put it down in the comment box. Let me know what method you use to set these bad boys up. Okay. I'm going to try to show you now that I got the new points in here what I was talking about. There you go. That means you're dialed in and 
we got spark, so hopefully it fires now. All right, we'll try her again. Oh, way too much. Perfect. All right, go ahead, Brad. I don't know how that's idling. There's no gas anywhere. What do you think of that, bud? Sweet. Well, that ran quite a bit when you give her too much gas. Uh, well, now that she fires, I guess we ought to change the oil. And I got some new sparkulators we could throw in there and tinker around a little bit, but I'd really like to get it out of this deep grass. So I think we'll pull her up on the road here. How's that sound? Good. Yeah. Well, the plan, if we ever had one, is just to kind of snag her up on this gravel path here, make it a little bit easier to get underneath her and stuff. No brakes, of course, just like everything else I own, so Bradley knows the drill. When we get up in there, he just goes ahead and hits me to stop. Well, the old girl did not want to come out of there. But we got her. First good look at it. Here. Got all the grass up the sides. Not too shabby. Look how far that one was sunk in the ground. And I think it must have been stuck. As you can see it's skidding here. Look at this. You can see there it was skidding. So I think we're going to have an issue with that right front. These seem to roll out. Okay. But we'll have to remember that right front. All right, we'll see if we can get this high enough to get some ramps under here. Let a guy can get his belly under there and see what he's got going on. Jack ain't gonna lift it right now. So, why don't we go one side at a time? I did bring some wood just in case this jack sinks too far. The tire's got air in it, Brad. Crazy. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's do this side. Why don't you kick with your leg? I don't want your head under there. You guys think I should pressure wash this or leave it how it sits? Kind of torn. Took 24 years to get this way. That's moss. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Actually, do smell a lot of gas in that. Hmm. Well, I could have tried to start it a bajillion times. 
surprised I didn't taste that earlier. Wow, she was full. Well, the one thing I can say Ford did a really good job of is the old oil filters right on the side here. Guy can just reach in here and snag that up. This one looks fine. That looks like motorcraft. Probably the factory unit. And we'll take some of this really bad oil and use around the new o ring here. Good enough. Well, today's flavor of oil is Otella 1540 diesel oil for a couple reasons. One, they don't make oil like they used to, so this is all the periodic table of elements that a guy needs. But mostly because it was the cheapest. Yeah, that ought to do. And now we're on to fuel. And I think what I'm going to do is, I've got a boat tank, of course, the good stuff. Run some fuel line under the cab. Snip her up through here. Lay it back here somewhere, and that'll be our fuel feed. And then we're just going to pray that that fuel pump works, because I don't have another one, and neither did the parts store. And of course, I was in a hurry, so I didn't bring an electric one, did I, Brad? Nope. All right. The old Evan Rood gas ought to work just fine. Bring that up here. that. She's half full even, so we're good. Well, the guy just started running this fuel line and got to looking and I didn't really have a choice because here's where the actual tank is and that fitting is just, she's, you know, it's, she's down. Well, what I'm wondering is, I think a guy could just hook onto this and that goes to the pump still, and then all I gotta do is whoosh, right to that, and and then I don't got a zip tie fuel line all the way up there. Not that I'm opposed to that, but I'm lazy. Well, what a guy did was took some brake clean and flushed her back, and we are getting some juice down here, so Bradley's gonna clamp her on right there, and then we don't have to run so much of that rubber line back to the old tank here. Just got to find something to cut that with and good to go. Guy doesn't have to but I like to prime my fuel lines and you could do that relatively easy by drinking 42 gallons of gas. Definitely still brake clean in that line as well. She's tart. We're going to change these sparkulators out. Give me a wire about that size. Oh man, she's in there. If a guy can read his plugs, he'll tell you an awful lot about your engine. What I know about this plug is Hasn't been changed in 319 years. Spark it later. Let's see what this one tells us. Besides almost being seized. Black, sooty. That's a good sign. No physical damage, we'll roll with it. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you think this will power break? About an 8 and a half. 8 and a half? That's pretty good odds. Brad. Ah, get off there. Same story. So far the plugs are really consistent. That's actually a really good sign. Gapped. These are probably the worst spark plugs a guy could buy, which is 
right up my alley. Last wire. Well, we'll give Honor some more gas and then we'll see if we can fire it. I'm going to see if I can get it right down the uh, vent tube here. Okay, Bradley, go ahead. Sounded pretty good so far. All right, we're going to try it again, Bradley. Hold on. More gas. There we go. Okay, go ahead. Come on, baby. Okay, go again. I don't think fuel's pulling yet. More down the vent tube. Maybe. Okay, go ahead. Keep on trying. Hold on. Go ahead. Squirter action. See if I can see these squirters working. Negative. Let's try it again one more time, Brad. I'm thinking she's not pulling fuel. So, I'm going to unhook the fuel line from the old carburetor here and fire it off again and see if we get fuel spray. Okay, got the coil unhooked. Got the fuel line out here. We'll crank on her and see if we get any fuel. Go ahead, Brad. <laughs> nope. Definitely not. So, we'll Try to prime that line again. I'm thinking the pump might be bad. Well, this is one of those many times. If you just do it wrong in the first place, you'll get an answer faster. We went right to this jerry can, and sure enough, she ain't pulling any fuel. I got this alien looking thing. I, I don't even know. I mean, again, Ford stuff, definitely not that Pump. This might be to a 300 and need fittings for it. Lucky enough, I carry a bunch of fuel fittings in my ashtray just for cases like this. So, I guess we're going to try to rig this thing on as long as the uh, lever here is correct. And if not, I guess we're going to try to find an electric pump somewhere. Go from there. <sighs> So, uh, nope, we got a couple hours left of daylight, I guess I'll start calling around, try to find an electric pump, go from there. A couple hours later, we did find an electrotronic pump, and we went ahead and got that professionally installed, zip ties and what have you. 
snag that off. That seems to work. Just uh, threw that down there, ran a wire into the cab. And then of course we had to put a performance switch on her. That's over here and that works great. And it's still running off the boat tank. So we're gonna give her the 79th try. See if we can get her to fire and idle here. Okay, go ahead and crank on her. There she sits and idle, kinda. Oop. But I can't get the right uh, fuel pressure to leakage to overflow to idling. Go ahead and try it again. to see with my carburetor adjuster. It's sitting idling now. So, I think I'm going to throw some water in her and just, we're going to go test on her. Shut it out. Plenty of smoke. That just lets you know she's running. Nice and smoky after that little run. It's all that oil I spilt earlier. So I put a little bit of coolant in it and I guess we're going to try to run it a little bit longer and see if the thermostat stuck but my carburetor adjusting tool also works as a thermostat opener 400 so I got that covered. But I think we're going to try to run her a little bit longer and See if we can get some coolant circulating through it. All right, go ahead, fire it up. Immediately start. If that doesn't impress you, I don't know what will, I guess. 24 years sitting there, and that thing immediately starts. Muffler's completely rotted out. Bradley's working on getting this other rear off and we're putting these on. I actually found a factory set of, uh, these came off of 68 I believe, but Firestone bias flies, wide ovals. Got a whole matching set, this side's already on and that's going to go a long ways getting this thing down the road. That one's holding air, we might leave her on. But this one, I was playing around with the clutch just a minute ago. This wheel is definitely locked again. Remember when we 
pulled it out from up there. It skidded quite a ways, so not quite sure what's going on. If we can rock it loose or if that wheel bearing or hub is frozen. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun, I'm sure. Tough ones left? Yeah. Yeah, that little compressor, not doing very hot. While he's working on that last wheel, we work on the master cylinder, and she's she's pretty grody. I don't think that's gonna work. And of course, I just broke that right off. This one came out though. So, if all goes well, and I can swap that out quick, that's 50% brakes, and that's good enough for me. So these here units supposed to be bench bled, whatever that means. I just mount them in the old pickup truck, hold my fingers over them. Kiddo pumps the pedal when oil squirts out, hook up the brake lines, and boom. She's ready to go. Lead her off with the wheel cylinders, and that's good enough. I got the fronts capped off here, but I did put a little oil in there to lubricate the piston in there so I don't tear up the seal. It might just give us enough brakes to drive her out of this property like I intended to today. We're getting really close. Got the front wheels left to do. And then we're, we're driving her. Well, we got all four wheels on. And I'm still worried about this one here, so I'm gonna fire it up and see if it's broke free or not and see what we get out of it. So, here we go. Well, that's definitely an issue and the bigger issue is she's got pretty much no clutch left which is probably the reason it was parked in the first place it won't even spin the tires in reverse dragging it so might have to hook it onto my other pickup and drag it around a little bit uh, see if I can get creative but I got to try to get that side broke free because I'm like 200 yards from driving it out of here and we're losing sunlight pretty quick Seat belt on. Check. All right. 120 degrees. There's a lot of ladybugs in here. It smells like moldy bread and ketchup. All right. 24 years since this truck left this property. Let's see what happens.